Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and this video is about my second attempt at printing TPU in the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. Now, I did try it before in the past, and I made a video about it, and my results were middling. I did have some success, such as printing this case for my phone with the infill exposed purposefully so that it can give me this really cool design pattern. This worked out just fine. But then when I tried to do something larger, like this Charizard figure that was nice and squishy, it failed halfway through. I ended up getting a clog. It was a bit of a pain and it just kind of put me off on TPU for a while. But I decided to go back and give it a second shot. And I changed some of my approach to trying to get this done. And I'm going to show you what that entire process was like for me. The filament that I used for this second attempt was provided by eSun. This is their eTPU 95A. So this is their standard TPU. They also have a high speed TPU, but this is just the regular stuff. And when I got this, the first thing that I did was pop it into a filament dryer and I dried it for around five hours at 60 degrees Celsius. Now, unlike the last time that I tried this, I printed directly from the dryer box using my somewhat janky but still effective method of doing that for the Flash Wars Adventure 5M. So I printed it directly from the dryer box and this time I decided to use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle as opposed to the 0.4. I thought they'll give me a greater chance of avoiding any clogs. And the last thing that I did was adjust some settings. So I created a profile specifically for this eSun TPU. And I'm also going to share that with you. So if you're interested in getting the print profile that I created for that, you can check the link in the description. It's going to take you over to Google Drive and that's where you find the files. You can drop it into Orca Slicer and then you'll be able to use it. So just remember it's for the 0.6 millimeter nozzle on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. Now, the first thing that I decided to print, I wanted to start small. So I did just a doorstop. And I'm happy to say that this doorstop came out beautifully. I didn't have any problems printing this doorstop at all. I had very little to no stringing and this got me on my way. And this is a very practical thing because I have a door inside of this house. One of the rooms, it doesn't stay all the way open like I would like for it to, but this gets the job done. And since it's TPU, it is pliable. It is bendable and it ain't breaking when I bend it. So when I got the confidence with this smaller part, I decided to step it up a little bit, just like I did last time. So I wanted to print like a little figure. And then I found this guy. This is modeled after a peep, you know, the candy that you either love or hate. And this is a stress reliever. It's supposed to squeeze this peep to relieve some of your stress. And it required no supports at all. And this is another thing that printed perfectly the very first time around. And I think that it came out good as well. The only thing about this peep here is that I think I was supposed to print it at 4% infill. I ended up printing it at 15. I didn't change the setting. So he's not as squishy as I would like for him to be. But you can see on the ears, I can still like squeeze the ears, you know? So, you know, it's still got that TPU quality to it, but it's just not as squishy as I want it to be because he's got too much infill. But the point is it still came out wonderfully. Now, after I did that, I got a little bit bold, just like with the Charizard. When I had some success with the phone case and the, and the watch guard, I decided to print something bigger, something that was gonna take a longer time, 13 hours in fact, over 13 hours. So I decided to go with the current trend in 3D printing and I made Crocs. And this also came out looking so good print it perfectly the very first time. Look at the bottom of this. Look at the bottom of this shoe. Those lines are just so clean and it's smooth. And granted, this is not big enough to fit my foot because unfortunately on the Adventure 5M, the build volume is not large enough to print a croc that will actually fit me. So I had to print this at 
80% of its original scale. And I'm gonna leave links to all the models in the description, they're all free. But the size of this shoe is big enough for like a, a young kid. My six year old cannot fit it, but she will grow into it. So I think this is something for someone either has really small feet or a young child, you know, probably like under 10 years old. But it came out looking so good and it printed just like this. So I had a brim underneath the heel here and then I painted on supports. If you look at it closely here, I painted on supports right here. Then I left a little gap and I put some more supports right here and then another small gap and then some supports right there. And that did the job and I just used the auto supports, but I painted where I wanted the auto supports to be. And it was just the normal supports, not the tree supports. And then it came off the build plate just super, super easy. In fact, I was able to take this shoe and just pick it up and the supports were still on the bed. You don't have to wait for it to cool down or anything. It didn't leave any like scratches and scarring, nothing like that. And this shoe feels so good. Look, I'm squishing it as we speak. And I have my kids put it on. They didn't complain about it. And it feels, it feels very similar to this, the shoe shoe. Now these aren't Crocs, but you know, hey, they got the similar aesthetic going on to them. But yeah, this came out really, really good. I'm very happy about that. And then the last thing I wanted to do, I wanted to wrap things up with another toy. I wanted to try see if the flexi stuff still worked with TPU and it does. And I wanted to print him out because he's gray. I'm using the gray filament, why not? And it's a flexi model and it still has all that wonderful flexiness going on for it. And I printed this with 4% infill. Mouth moves, although it doesn't stay closed, it just kind of flops open. And he's also nice and squishy because I printed him with 4% infill. So now that I've done this, I'll just hand this off to the kids. They can do whatever they want with it. But I'm very happy to say that my second attempt at printing TPU with this machine has been a resounding success. 100% success rate, no failures at all. I'd say that there won't be any failures in the future, but it's left me feeling a lot more confident about doing this. And it's made me want to print more things out of TPU in the future, even though for this filament, I have to print a lot slower in order for it to be successful, as successful as it can be at least. So remember, if you are interested in the printing profile that I made for this that worked out good for me for the 5M, six millimeter nozzle, 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle, go ahead, check the link in the description so that you can download it. It is for Orca Slicer and you drop it in and see how it works out for you. I'm also curious to know what your experience has been like printing with TPU. So let me know down in the comments. I'll keep my eyes open. So that is it for now, you guys. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe so you'll know what another one drops because I always have more coming very, very soon. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.